Now, admittedly, while week one did not exactly go the way I had hoped and expected for my beloved Chicago Bears, the Bears, it is still exciting, nonetheless, that the NFL season is finally here. So let's take a look back at the week that was week one of the 2019 NFL season. All starting with that classic of a Thursday night game between the Packers and the Bears. The 199th meeting, and we hopefully can all quickly flush this down the toilet. Ooh, midday Mitch and noontime Nagy absolutely sucked. The Packers did just enough to hold on, beating my Bears 10-3. to Congratulations! What else did we have? Baker goes bust. The Titans... Pick off Baker three times, sack him five times, and destroy the Browns in Cleveland in the dog pound, 43-13. to Made puppies out of every single one of them. Lamar Jackson lit up the Dolphins for five touchdown passes, and the tank is clearly out of Miami as the Ravens beat the Dolphins 59-10. to If you're a Dolphins player, that's right. Try and get off that sinking ship as quickly as you can. You can say, skull if you're a Vikings fan to Dalvin Cook. The Vikings committed to the run game early and often. It was successful. Dalvin Cook goes over 100 yards. And the Minnesota Vikings win in dominant fashion over the Falcons 28-12 in a game that wasn't even that close as compared to what the final score ended up being. Josh Allen was terrible early. He clutched up late when he needed to. Sam Darnold missed some opportunities. And the Bills came from behind to beat the Jets in New Jersey. i got to remember, it's not technically New York. 17-16. Ouchies, ouchies, ouchies. The Redskins started off hot, but the Eagles came back strong in the second half on the legs of Deshaun Jackson and the arm of Carson Wentz, and they end up beating the Redskins 32-27. to The Rams overcome Christian McCaffrey's 200-plus all-purpose yards and two touchdowns and hold on to beat the Panthers in Carolina 30-27, to an impressive opening week victory for sure. Sammy Watkins is a back and apparently healthy. He goes for three scores, Nick Foles, Breaks his collarbone, is out for an indefinite period of time. Chiefs win 40-26. to And Jaguars fans, here it is! It's Gardner Minshew time! Yeah, baby! Brissett and the Colts came storming back in the second half in their de facto home game in Los Angeles. I said that right. But Austin Eckler's three touchdowns proved to be too much as the Chargers came and won in overtime 30-24 to in a really exciting game. The Seahawks... In that week one game, you just never know. DJ DK Metcalf showed some promise, but the Seahawks struggled. Uh, big touchdown pass in the fourth quarter to Tyler Lockett helped seal the deal. Seahawks hold on to beat the Bengals 21 to 20 in a game that I did not think it was going to be that close. Good news for the Giants, you've got Saquon Barkley. He's a stud. Bad news is, outside of like maybe him and Evan Ingram, most of the rest of your team sucks. The Cowboys are really, really good. They steamrolled the Giants. There was never really much doubt after early in the game. Uh, they win 35-17, to 17, really just going away with it. The Lions were up big early. Kyler Murray played like trash in the first three quarters, but it's not how you start sometimes. It's how you finish. And that fourth quarter comeback with the two touchdown passes, and all of a sudden you look, and while they didn't score in overtime, neither team did. It ends up in a tie. 27-27. You have to look at it as a big victory for Kyler Murray in his first NFL start, especially considering that that fourth quarter comeback, the end of it, plus overtime, hitting the big throws to Larry Fitzgerald. Fucking Captain Clutch needs you say anymore. Anytime a receiver does anything clutch in the future, we should just call it pulling a Fitzgerald or pulling a Fitz or something like that. Kyler Murray, with the nation's eyes solely focused on him, stepped up and looked good in a big-time way. The 49ers score two defensive touchdowns. Jameis Winston is shits, and the 49ers win 31-17, to <laughs> if you need to say any more. Uh, the Sleepy Steelers went in ill-prepared and ill-equipped to deal with the buzzsaw of the Patriots feeling that 2007 vibe. Didn't even have Antonio Brown. It didn't matter. They smashed the Steelers 33-3 making it a very early bedtime for a lot of us on Sunday night. The exciting game happened on Monday night. That was a classic between the Texans and the Saints. The Texans, late touchdown pass by Deshaun Watson. By God, he did everything he possibly could to put his team in a position to win. Unfortunately, the defense didn't have a ton of punch left. Bill O'Brien is a moron. They're running prevent late. Here comes Will Lutz, 57-58-yard field goal, down your eye, straight in your nuts, and the Saints 
pull out a last second victory at home in the Superdome 30 to 28. And then the Raiders behind Josh Jacobs, two touchdown runs, beat the Broncos in week one. Von Miller and Nick Chubb combined to have zero sacks. The Raiders are 1-0. They win 24-16. Uh, your biggest winners for the week. you got to start off with the Tennessee Titans. On the road, a team a lot of people are expecting to at least be a playoff team, if not be the team that wins the AFC North. And the Titans went in and beat the brakes off of them. Beat the brakes off of them. And that was total and complete domination. They absolutely deserve the love after one week for a team that many people, myself included, think can win that AFC South. They sure looked the part here in week number one in the Browns. Ooh. I look at the Minnesota Vikings, sure, it was a home game, but they dominated Atlanta and they ran the ball really, really well. And they were committed to running the ball. That makes them a threat to the NFC North. There is no question about if they can consistently do that and Dalvin Cook can consistently stay healthy. For once, if Dalvin Cook is healthy, the dynamic of this Vikings team, team changes dramatically. They were big winners to me in week number one. And then the Patriots. You know, you look at the course of the week, being able to acquire Antonio Brown you know, off, <laughs> off the street, so to speak. You orchestrate that whole thing, make that happen. We'll see how these other allegations play out. But for the moment, you look at it. This is a team that on Sunday night just stomped the hell, stomped a mud hole in those sleepy-ass, unprepared Pittsburgh Steelers. Like, how could you not think of them as big winners, knowing that Josh Gordon is there for the moment, and you've got Edelman, Tom Brady throws for 340 yards, three touchdowns, and the number one wide receiver isn't even in the lineup. This is going to be scary. You're feeling those 2007 vibes probably a little bit. Looking at the losers, uh, current Dolphins players, um, yeah, it's going to be more like that this year. It's going to be ugly. By design, get your own 16 hats ready because that was embarrassing. That was sad. Oof, oof, oof. You got to go with the Detroit Lions. You know, you have the Cardinals down. You're on the road, fourth quarter. You have no business letting the Cardinals come back in that game, especially since Kyler Murray was played so poorly in the first three quarters. Like, run the ball, take charge, end the damn game. And they failed to do so and left the Cardinals right back into it. And ultimately, instead of coming out of it with a road victory, which is precious to get in the NFL, which is something that good teams do, the Detroit Lions instead walk away with the tie, which feels just like a loss in a lot of ways. Uh, I could argue the Bears are losers, but I will go with the Cleveland Browns more so. Because while the Bears offense stunk, the Bears defense was outstanding. The Browns were just horrible in pretty much every facet of the game. You're talking about division title hype and playoff hype and playoff run hype, and they get boat raced by 30 at home in week one. You know, as bad as it was for the Dolphins and Dolphins players and Dolphins fans, you know, Cleveland Browns, you weren't expecting this. Dolphins fans and Dolphins players should have, in theory, expected this. If you're a Browns fan, you shouldn't be expecting this, and this is not okay. It was just really, really bad. In terms of your week one best performers, you got to start off with Lamar Jackson at the quarterback position. 17 to 20, over 300 yards passing, five touchdown passes. You could say, well, yeah, it was against the Dolphins. But you look at some of those big plays and some of those throws against that defense, there was decent coverage, and he hit the ball deep with pinpoint accuracy. He put it in the right spot. So the talk about the lack of competition, maybe that plays into the 17 for 20, I'll grant you. But some of the touchdown passes to Hollywood Brown, to Sneed, those were big-time premier throws that Lamar Jackson made. Not bad for a running back. Uh, best of the running backs this week. You had a few guys that had really nice performances, Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. But I will go with Austin Eckler, even though he didn't have the same rushing yardage as these guys. He had 154 total yards and three touchdowns for a Chargers team wondering what their offense is going to look like without Melvin Gordon. Well, you kind of got the answer here, and the answer is they're not going to look that bad. Uh, Sammy Watkins, when he's healthy, apparently, is going to be really, really good again. Now you look at him, he had nine catches. What do you have? A, I'm looking at my notes here. 198 yards and three touchdowns. Now, even with Tyreek Hill, Cheetah being out for a few weeks, when they come back, if you've got both of them healthy and you still got Travis Kelsey, you've got Patrick Mahomes. That Chiefs offense is going to put up a ton of yards and a ton of points. There's no question about that. Uh, TJ Hawkinson set a record, I believe, for most receiving yards by a tight end in his first NFL game. Six catches, 131 yards, and a touchdown, throwing some key blocks along with it. 
Um, I don't know what the Lions are going to be this year, but they may have found their Gronkowski type of tight end. That is for sure. Special shout out to Delaney Walker coming back from injury. I think he had two touchdown catches. And he said the Browns are who we thought they were. Thank you for shouting out Denny Green. And speaking of those Titans, I look at the Titans defense. That was a week's best performance to me. Three interceptions, five sacks, holding the Browns explosive offense to 13 points. What more can you really say? Uh, your worst of the week. I got to go to the Thursday night game, and maybe it's a homer thing, but seriously, Trubisky was terrible. He's three years in now, and he still can't move the defense with his eyes. He still can't go through his progressions. He can't see the field. You know, that's not good. At some point in time, the excuses and the BS must stop. Although I'm dealing with the same fan base that a lot of people made excuses for Cutler for eight damn years, so I'm not giving, holding up my hopes too hot. But as bad as Trubisky was, Nagy was just unbelievably god-awful bad with his play calling. Get the ball in David Montgomery's hands more. Get the ball in Tariq Cohen's hands more. You can run the football. It is not illegal to do so. In fact, it is encouraged and requested that you do so. Because if you do, you might have won the damn game! It's horrible. Embarrassing to watch. Oh, you're not playing him in the preseason. Well, apparently your play calling needed some reps in the preseason too because it was even equally shitty and more shitty than what Trubisky was. Good Lord almighty. Baker Mayfield, the three picks, only 13 points on offense. You know, during the offseason, he's spouting his mouth off about the Giants and Odell Beckham situation, spouting off about them taking Daniel Jones, six overall. You know, this is one of these things that, you know, when you're out there and you've got personality and attitude and swag, you know, sometimes it's really, really good, and sometimes it's going to bite you in the ass a little bit. Well, you talk too much shit, bite you in the ass a little bit, so be careful what you do. And then you got to look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, this was just a clear-cut example of you could see great head coaching versus not great head coaching. The Patriots were ready. The Patriots were prepared. They were on point. They executed relatively well, and the Steelers did none of that. None of that. Like the epitome to me of the difference between a Bill Belichick coach team and a Mike Tomlin coach team is when James Washington catches a deep ball down the sideline and he just steps out of bounds. Why are you trying to stop the clock? Your team needs a big play. You, you probably could score from there. Like these are the types of things, and it, it's hard to always put that on a head coach per se, but damn it all. At some point in time, it is a reflection of the lack of, of preparation and appropriate preparation by a head coach. That was embarrassing. What a joke of a performance. You're trying to establish that you don't need Antonio Brown. Week one against the team that Antonio Brown ended up with most certainly was not a way to do this. This was horrible. Um, but with all of that, we've now reached the end of this, the two-minute warning, if you will. And I want to bring this up here because I feel like this is very important. It is week one that we just got done with. Week one. One week of the season. One week does not make or break anybody. And in some ways, that is a reminder to myself as a Bears fan that, hey, remember the Bears lost in an embarrassing fashion, 20-point comeback by Aaron Rodgers last year in the opening game on Sunday night, and the Bears still went 12-4 and four and won their division, made the playoffs? You know, it's key to remember that one week does not a season make. Like last year, for example, seven of the 12 playoff teams lost in week one. 7 of 12, more than half of the teams that ended up making the playoffs lost in week one. And also, when you look at it, talking about last season, seven teams that won by seven or more points, seven teams that won by seven or more points in week number one last year failed to make the playoffs. So while it is easy based off of what we see, and it's the only thing we have to go off of is that week one, and if your team lost, it puts a bad feeling in your mouth, it puts this whole bunch of urgency here on week number two, and week number two for your team, especially if they lost, is very important. You could argue week two, from all perspectives, is more important than week one, because if you won in week one, you want to win in week two to get to two and oh. If you lost in week one, you're 0 and one. You don't really want to start off 0 and two, because your chances of making the playoffs dramatically decrease once you go 0 and two. It doesn't have to be the be all end all, but it is not a great way to start. Worst case scenario, you want to come out of those first two weeks one and one. That said, there is no reason to panic, people. It is only one week. If you're a Dolphins fan, panic, because you know your team is the shits. Other than that, though, one week does not a season make. There is a lot of football to play, and a lot of teams that look bad now will look a whole lot better in December, and a lot of teams that look great now are going to look like crap in December. Just remember that.